The consumer electronics world is well known for developing products that have a limited lifespan. Some of these products are even designed to fail. That's why in this video, I'm talking about planned obsolescence and whether or not hearing aid manufacturers are actually designing their products to become obsolete. Coming up. Hi guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and Founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Anthem, Arizona. And on this channel, I cover a bunch of hearing related information to help make you a better informed consumer. So if you're into that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click the bell to receive a notification every time I post a new video. A few weeks ago, the country of Italy fined Apple and Samsung for making updates to their operating system that made their old smartphones function even slower, which inherently would encourage users of these smartphones to need to upgrade to new devices sooner than they normally would. Back in 2003, the now popular YouTuber Casey Neistat created a video showing about how the Apple iPod battery only lasted 18 months, and if you want to get a new battery in that, it costs the same amount as just buying a new iPod. These are both cases of planned obsolescence, which as the name implies, is the creation of a product with the plan in mind of it becoming obsolete at a certain period of time to force consumers to actually buy a new one of those products. But what about hearing aids? Are hearing aids actually being designed with the intent of giving them a limited lifespan to force you to buy hearing aids sooner than you normally would? Well, let me share a story with you. When I first started my clinic, I had an existing hearing aid user come in to actually get new hearing aids. Turns out that she had 12 year old hearing devices that weren't really working well anymore. And her previous clinic told her that they couldn't get the hearing devices repaired because there's no parts for these devices. And they couldn't even reprogram them because the software doesn't even exist anymore. More. On the surface, this would seem like a case of planned obsolescence. A hearing aid manufacturer would restrict the amount of parts that are out in circulation so they couldn't get the devices repaired, and they would just completely eliminate that software and any support for that software so you couldn't reprogram the devices. But that isn't exactly the case. In the case of this particular patient, the devices that she had, even though they were 12 years old, you could get them repaired through an all make repair service. So you actually can send those hearing aids in. It's not cheap to have this done. It's definitely cheaper than actually getting a brand new set of hearing aids, but you can get pretty much any hearing aid repaired nowadays as long as you send it in and spend several hundreds of dollars to get those devices fixed. From the programming perspective, you can actually get access to old programming software from any manufacturer. If the new version of the software doesn't have the old version embedded in it, you can actually get a hold of the manufacturer and get them to send you a CD, a flash drive, or even go on their website to a download link of the old software and get pretty much any hearing aid that has ever been created reprogrammed. After spending some time with this patient, she ultimately decided that she wanted to keep her 12 year old hearing aids that she had always been happy with and not go with new devices because she thought she had to. Would she ultimately hear better with new hearing aids? Yes. Would I recommend that everyone go 12 years without upgrading their technology? No. But everybody's different. Everybody has different wants and needs and expectations from their hearing aid technology. And if you're someone who wants to use the same old technology that you've always used, you can get it repaired and reprogrammed as often as you'd like. As long as I'm capable of hitting prescriptive targets with this patient's older technology, I have no ethical issues with letting them keep their old devices. In fact, it's nice that they can actually choose when they want to switch to a newer piece of technology rather than that technology being planned to become obsolete. When it comes to hearing aids, they are clearly designed to last. You just have to find a hearing care professional who's willing to put in the work to make sure that they keep going instead of just defaulting into a recommendation of new hearing aids. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. And if you want to see other videos just like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.